Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Croke Park for the 2023 GAA Champion 15 Awards. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage your host for the evening, Damien Lawler. Good evening everybody. Welcome to a historic night here at the home of Gaelic Games. Crow Park. Tonight, we're delighted to once again celebrate the players of the Laurie Maher, Nicky Rackard, Christy Ring, Joe McDonough, and Talchin Cup competitions. Over the next hour or so, we'll honour each individual selected for the teams, and we'll also announce the player of the year from each competition. But first, before we get down to formalities, please join me in welcoming to the stage Uchtaron Cummins, Luke Lasquale, Larry McCarthy. Carda, filed the road galair, quick and okay, Bruntishaw Park and Croke, you know, and not. Brunford Gradham, um, our Scott M. Rory, Cravica Shows of McDonagh, and the Champions 15, August Curran Talton, August Yenam Cogardicus Legacht in a Yohi Gradham and not. Ladies and gentlemen, to be picked to represent your county is a singular honour bestowed on a select few. But we've always reserved a place for celebrating those who are a cut above in terms of ability and inspiration. And it was in 1958, in conjunction with Texaco, that we first formally acknowledged the Hurler and Footballer of the Year. For those who had long memories, they were the great Tony Wall from Thurla Sarsfields and Jim McKeever from Bally McGuigan. Gathered here tonight, we have an outstanding selection of stars who lit up the Joe McDonough, the Talton, the Ring, Racker and Mark competitions this year. We have great games, and we have great players who bring those games to life. And I, want you to, and I want to pay tribute to you, to your families, to your clubs, and all the communities that you represent. Together tonight, we have family members, spouses, partners, mentors, and coaches here. And as an acknowledgement of their contribution to your success, I would ask all of the 45 winners, 45 of you, to stand up individually and give a round of applause to those at your table who have contributed to your success. Gentlemen, stand up. Acknowledge those at your table, please. Well done. And thank you to everybody who's contributed to this success. Um, few, if any, of the decisions that we've made around competition structures have been as successful as the introduction of the Ring, Rackard, Mar and Joe McDonough Cups. Competitive games with a chance to be crowned champions here in Croke Park is a prize that continues to bring out the best in all our teams and in our players. And 2023 was no different. Carlo, Mead, Whitlaw and Monaghan took the honours. But they were pushed all the way, I can assure you, and that's very much reflected in the fact that we have hurlers from 12 different counties being honoured here this evening. And if I can be slightly parochial, perhaps globally parochial, I'm particularly happy to see our international units get rewarded, as Conor Madden, representing Lan Lancashire, gets an award this evening. Mahu. Let me also suggest that these competitions matter greatly. Um, Sean Guinan is a friend, an Offaly man who spent many years hurling with the Offaly hurlers in New York. He's now domiciled for many years in Monaghan. And he had three sons involved with the Monaghan team this year. Um, Offaly people, and certainly not Sean Guinan, I would suggest to you, is a person, are people who are prone to emotions. But when the final whistle went in the Lowry Mar final, he was in floods of tears. And the sheer joy of his ch children winning an All-Ireland competition was a glory to behold, I would suggest to you. And I make that point because long may it continue. These competitions matter across the spectrum, ladies and gentlemen. And it was that approach to a tiered hurling competition that is a driver for a similar structure in football. And the second iteration of the Talton Cup was a huge success. Great matches, high scores, great performances, right up to the last day when Mead, managed by the gentleman who was up here a couple of minutes ago, edged out down. Um, and if memory serves me right, it was after that win that Colm O'Rourke had a lot of people scratching their heads when in an interview on Pitchside here in Croke Park he said, Nunc bidendum tempus est. The classical Latin scholars in the room will obviously know that that means now is the time for drink. 
Uh, before I suggest the same thing to you this evening, um, let me thank the wonderful staff in Croke Park for organising this event, Lorena Kelly in particular, and wish you all a great evening. Ko gaudicus aris, mila buikus, agus berbuha asaniha. Korabila mahagur. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, OK. Gaurav mahagut, Larry. Agus di, which you wrote around freshen. Now, to our first team of the year. This team is comprised of players from the Laurie Maher, Nicky Rackard, Christy Ring hurling competitions. Three competitions that mean so much to those involved as Monaghan's Niall Garland, Wicklow's Christy Morehouse, and meet Sean Garrity, described for us now. That was my first time at Croke Park. I, I'd missed out. The, the Blaney Hurlers had got there in 2019, I think, for an All-Ireland Club final, and I was actually working abroad in, in, in Doha at the time, so I missed out, and so I was kind of worried. It was like, lovely, we've, we've experienced in the team, boys have played, but then the likes of myself and other boys that hadn't played, you know, like, how are we going to react here? Like, is, is the whole, you know, Hall of Blue of Croke Park, is the whole stadium, the atmosphere around it going to maybe get the better? Like, so we're trying to get that out of our heads all week. Niall Garland. Garland, oh, sir! Arakar is stuck, Celine Tonic, Farval in the Lurgan. We've played Donegal, I think, three times uh, this year, and it's, you know, it was tip and tap. We knew that they were going to be around the business end of things as well. Pass on to Galing is stuck, Todd County, Shalim is stuck, Celine Ton. Cool on to Keg Dunangal, Agasag Hilferty. We hung in there in the first half and clawed back in, and we got our nose in front. We. We knew then that we just hold on to this, we, be, we should be out the gate. Bruish to Gunson in order to hang. Sheen Agus Creek to Celine Ton. Anna Fuller Fad. Agus Kayla. Agus Andy O'Brien. It's a great competition, the Nicky Rackard. And in fairness, you know, we were delighted to win it. The clubs are getting stronger in Wicklow. So I, uh, I have no fear for hurling in Wicklow. There's a lot of my generation of players are, were starting to come towards the tail end of our careers. So it, w it was a good year in terms of we got, we started to, to um, get new young blood into the panel, which, which, which was good, so hopefully them boys can, can, can kick things on again to, uh, for the cup coming near. We started the first half really well, but um, the second half was, uh, there he came on um, extremely strong that day, um, and by the last couple of minutes it was just old school, get the ball out of our own half as quick as we can. As someone come from me to, to get up to Coe Park, we, we come up in the 90s watching our footballers, I've been looking out to do it um, three times here that final whistle in Crowe Park. That made it extra sweet for our own little small community to have three lads um, involved in the day. Look, you're with your best mates on the field and then you have your, your, your closest family in the stand, so it's just everyone who cares is there really. We had an awful start, I think, of being the last team to ever get to Crowe Park, so it was nice to, you know, rub that one out of the history books and then have that, you know, we have a 100% record, you know, in, in Croke Park, you know, that's that's the record now that we'll have people talking about rather than the, oh, Monon's the last team to get there, I'm sure they'll never get there and then, you know, they'll need, they'll need the Google Maps to find their way up there and, you know, all this kind of crack, so it's nice to rub that to one side now and now we're, we're all there and winners in Croke Park. Like there's some great talent in, in the in the Nicky Rackard championship and to be to be uh, named as one of them uh, championship 15 guys it's it's absolutely brilliant for me especially in, in smaller counties and not so called hurling counties like us like we really hold on to things like that and cherish them you know I'm I'm picking it up obviously for myself for my club and my family but definitely a massive massive thank you to the boys like us and the management because wouldn't be even remotely close to having this interview even if it wasn't for them like my parents my, my girlfriend like they're the ones who don't see me uh, during the year so at least they get a night out um so um yeah so it it, it, it is an, it is a nice um, award to get at the end of the year Yeah, absolutely great to get the thoughts of the lads, brilliant ambassadors for their county and for the game of hurling. We'll now announce the winners of the ring, Rackard and Maher Team of the Year. And we're starting with the number one jersey. Please welcome to the stage, from Donegal, Luke White.
a leading figure for his club, Karen Dunne, in helping them secure the intermediate hurling cup against McCool's. Luke was a standout performer for Donegal in the Nicky Rackard Cup. A presence between the sticks, he also scored a goal and two points in the Nicky Rackard Cup final. He did, and he had a, at the start he had a 420 kilometre journey between Wexford and Karen Dunne as well, so that's serious commitment. That's your goalkeeper, uh, Luke White, ladies and gentlemen. Now next we move to the full back line and we've got representatives from the Christie Ring Cup and the Nicky Racker Cup. Please put your hands together for our cornerbacks from Meath, Sean Garrity and Simon Ennis and Wicklow's Andrew Kavanagh is in the full back position. Meath Sean Garrity adds tonight's award to a mantelpiece which already features three Christie Ring Cup medals and a Champions 15 award from 2019. His countryman Simon Ennis has a championship debut to remember in this year's Christie Ring Cup when he was outstanding in their opening win against Mayo and continued to impress throughout the year. And every team needs a pillar of strength at the edge of the square and Andrew Kavner was awesome for Wicklow when the Bandarik man commanded their defence. Yeah, Andrew was inspirational and so too were Sean and Simon as well. And of course, uh, in the Ennis family household, it's a busy one because Shauna won an All-Star last year as well. Now we're back on to the half-back line. The half-back line also contains two players from the Christie Ring Cup and one for the Nicky Racker Cup as well. From Derry, in the number five jersey, it's Richie Mullen. He's alongside Meads James Torr at centre-back. And Danny, uh, Danny Cullen from Donegal completes the half-back line. A formidable half-back line. Richie Mullen from Schlocknail played a vital role in the semi-final victory over Mayo as he stamped his imprint on the Derry defence. Alongside him is the veteran James Torr, who made his Mead debut back in 2012. And Danny Cullen from Donegal, who was the Nicky Racker Cup Player of the Year back in 2020. Well done, James. Welcome, Danny, as well. Danny was only 16 when he made his inter-county uh, debut back in 2004. Uh, it's three All-Ireland titles to his name now. Completes a stellar half-back line, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in Orna Parka, it's time to honour the two men playing in the middle of the field. Wearing number eight, having impressed for Derry in the Christie Ring Cup, it's Cormac O'Doherty and our first representative from the Laurie Mara Cup this evening, the Monaghan great, Niall Garland. A powerful centre field of this team, Schlocknail's Cormac O'Doherty was a talisman at the heart of the Derry team and scored an impressive 114 in the final. He was previously an award winner in 2021. Niall also provided a scoring threat from midfield for Monaghan, scoring 2-3 in the showpiece game. Well done, Niall, giant captain for the year. Came into the Monaghan set up eight years ago, a class act. Well done to yourself and Cormac. OK, time to move on to the half-forward line now. And it's no surprise whatsoever that it's dominated by two more terrific Mead players, Jack Regan and Eamon Ogadunica, and they're flanked by Lancashire's Conor Madden. Yes, a much-deserved recognition for Conor Madden from the Full and Gales Club in Lancashire for his superb contributions in the Laurie Mar, including his seven points in the final. Alongside him, 2019 Christie Ring Cup Player of the Year, Jack Regan, who scored an impressive 14 points in the Christie Ring final. And Eamon Ogodunica, who had the ball over the bar just after 25 seconds in that game. Eamon O couldn't be with us this evening, so his father Eamon will join us on stage to collect his award. Eamon, of course, a, a champion, Ilan Piper, and his, his dad, Eamon, is here to collect his award tonight. Just a great combination there in the half-forward line. Jack endured a frustrating start to the season with injury, but went on to become a powerhouse. Well done to the three lads as well. You're doing lucky guys calling for a, for a quick interview. Just, uh, I suppose, what does it mean, first of all, to, to get over the finishing line, and what does it mean for the county? Hey, look, I suppose it's, it's huge. Um, obviously, we just came down the year previous, so it, it was very important for us to just go straight back up, and obviously, now that we're back up, we, we, we obviously want to hold our status up there for, obviously, maintain it for a, as long as we possibly can. We don't want to be the team that are just coming up and down, you know? 
Connor, yourself, like uh, just to, what it means to be here tonight, the actual achievement of all the hard work paying off. Uh, it's a massive achievement now for uh, Lancaster to, to get here and hopefully next year now we'll be in Grove Park again with Lancaster's. And just your own journey to get to, get to play for Lancashire. Yeah, it was my own journey to go over and hurl for Lancaster's and experience something different over there. Yeah, well, well done to the two guys as well. To Jack and to Connor, congratulations as well done. Finally, the full forward line of the 2023 Ring Racker the Mara team. It's star packed from the Nicky Racker Cup. Please welcome Wicklow's Christy Moorhouse and Andy O'Brien in the number 15 jersey. And actually, Monaghan, Niall Arthur is 15. Andy takes full, full forward position. Well done, lads. Christy and Andy add their awards to their winning medals from the Nicky Racker Cup this season. Andy's goal in the final helping them on their way to success. And Christy picks up his second Champions 15 award, having previously won one in 2020. Niall is Monaghan's second representative picking up an award tonight, and deservedly so, at the top scorer in the Lowry Mar this season, with a tally of 157. And in fairness, Andy turned up on the day. Uh, he gave so long to his county, played 159 times, and on all Ireland final day, he decided enough was enough, and he retired with serious dignity. Niall, let's, I'll get you to stay with me and have a quick chat if you don't mind. Yeah. Your own journey, Niall. I mean, you've, you've come a long way in hurling. Can you just tell the people here about where you started from and where you ended up? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, you could be here all night. Um, <laughs> look, at, uh, I'm from Clare originally. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to be successful with Clare Miners and 21s and Clinton Meads and had a spell with the seniors for a while as well. Um, but my job took me up this side of the country. I was in Drogheda for a long time and uh, just to... Journey kind of got the better of me there for a few years. I did a spell with Loud for a while as well. And then uh, I met a woman from Monaghan. And uh, I've been relocated even further afield. So um, ah, it was just too far to be traveling up and down for the club, even though I'd love to go back for another year. It's just simply four hours drive. So I relocated to Monaghan there last year, or two years ago now, sorry, and uh, joined the boys there this year. And look, I think we've had a great year, you know? And Didn't it, it up like this now, but we'll take it, you know? And I think we're clear you might have left out a couple of All Ireland 21 medals as well, Niall. Uh, I'll move over here to my, to my full forward. Just, it couldn't have gone better for you, Andy, just to, to do what you did for so long and then just drop the microphone in Crow Park and walk out the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, well, we, won, we got bet in two of them, yeah. two Christy rings, and uh, I was humming and hawing about going back, a few managers thinking this and that. So Casey got on board. He asked me to come back, and I said, I'll give it one more try. So it was nice to retire on my own. <laughs> yeah. Casey's a good coach as well. Uh, look. He's the best, mm. you know, he's Wicklow Hurling, that's what he is, so. A lot of lads that wouldn't have put their shoulders to the wheel, they went back because he was there, so. It's nice to win in Crow Park and retire in Crow Park. Yeah, that's an understatement. Christy, you know, for the service you've both given the county and for the likes of Andy and yourself, did you think the day would ever come? You had a heartbreak before you finally got over the line. Yeah, well, look, uh, if, again, when, when we were beaten in two Christy Ring finals, I. You know, a couple of years after that, we didn't we didn't get back to where we wanted to be. So there was a few dark days and even darker nights, I'd say. But um, look, it, we obviously got relegated, and rightly so. Um, mm. I went down to the Nicky record. Absolutely, we didn't take that. You know, we know exactly what's in this competition, and and to get back out of there was was no given for us. So you know, we, we were pulled together early on in the year, and and he said he was going back, and sure look. One phone call led to another, and I said, sure, look, I better go back, keep him company, and... Uh, um, we do the same next year? <laughs> the heart says yeah, but the leg says no, unfortunately, but... Um, what you say, Andy? No, 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 no. <laughs> you better promise to yourself, did you? It's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, in what a way to go out. Andy, Christy, and Niall, congratulations. Well done, lads. So, all different hurling journeys, but that concludes our first team of the evening. Let's take a quick recap of the winners. The Laurie Mara Cup has represented three players on the team. There are five players who featured in the Nicky Racker Cup this season, and the Christy Ring Cup hosts seven winners in the final side. Congratulations once again to all our winners. Okay, time now to switch our focus to the Joe McDonough Cup. 
What a competition we had, and we did a brilliant one again this year. It ended in the most dramatic of occasions, as told to us now by Owen Cahill of Offaly and Carlos Paddy Boland. That's our All Ireland, really, you know, at that level. It was absolutely massive now, yeah, because I suppose it was 2018 since it was won last. So it was absolutely huge, you know, especially for the underage you know, and everything, sure, for hurling in general. So our main goal at the start of the year was to win the, the league and then the Joe McDonough. So obviously looking to build up, everything was going really well, you know, training was good, preparation, everything went according to plan. Normally I don't, don't panic on four games or anything like that. Or I just do my usual, go up and pack my year bag and get my breakfast and go ahead and enjoy it on the way up now. I wouldn't be overthinking it much or anything. I kind of just take it, take it as it comes. The referee decides to play on. Playing on is Charlie Mitchell, the other 20 player, and he scored the opening goal of the game. And he's done so inside 40 seconds. What a start for Offaly. It happened so quick. But then again, it was so early in the game, like, you can't really fall under that. You just have to get the ball back up and get your scores. To try and get a foothold into the game is, is the main thing to know. So, kind of think at the start it was. I don't know, it was nearly a bit of a novelty, kind of in Crow Park or whatever, but it was just literally the first few minutes was even hard to remember nearly. It was just ball after ball kind of coming down and it was, you know, literally before you knew it, the game had kind of settled, but then Carlo obviously took, took a foothold in. The defenders then after that, they kind of knew and they kind of stuck together and they played an unreal game. Then after that, they didn't let that happen again. And cleared in the end by uh, Dermot Burns. Look, obviously we knew the threat that Paddy had and we, Look again, we had a game plan kind of for it and different men that were going to stop him and stuff. Striding forward here is John Nolan for Carlo. Oh, huge one in, and it's in the back of the net. But obviously Paddy is, so he's so good in the air. Brilliantly collected by Paddy Boland. Paddy's fourth goal in this campaign. And the referee blows for half time. And it is Carlo who are much the happier going in after 35 minutes of hurlings. Carlo, two goals and nine points. Offaly, one goal and seven. It allowed us that chance at half time to kind of regroup, kind of think, look, worse is after happening now. We've conceded two goals, we've demand down, there's nothing else out here that can face us too much in the second half. And it was just to get our heads back down and get hurling again. They got a couple of scores and, you know, there's, there's points being shot this way and it's coming back this way. There's a score after score after score, no one really knew what was going on. Started the second half, I think we got a couple of points in a row and next week all of a sudden, you know, it's a three or four point game and it's, it, headwise, it's a lot easier to get back into a game like that than, you know, a seven or eight point game. Still over a minute left. Killian Sampson with the next line ball for Offaly. Up towards Shane Dooley, bats it down towards Owen Cahill. Cahill's having a go to level the match. He's leveled it back down at the final. Seven points scored by Owen Cahill. Went extra time then and, you know, did we have a bit of relief that we didn't lose it in the 70 minutes maybe? And then maybe we should have won ourselves. So, but look, that was, that's, that's the game at the end of the day. Those first few minutes that you have in the dressing just before extra time, it's it, it's a crazy place really to be honest because you have so many guys cramping, you have so many guys that have picked up lit knocks and injuries and stuff so it's literally everybody's all over the place really in the dressing but it's just then again to try and calm guys down, get everybody ready to go. Carlo were just a little bit stronger than us in extra time, I think the legs were really gone on us at that stage like and it was, it was tough one. And it's all over and Carlo have beaten Offaly and they've won the McDonough Cup for the second time in their history. This is my first year in at the Carlo Senior Hurlers and even to be starting and competing with him was brilliant, but just to, and to win the to win the final end has really topped it off. To know that at the end of the year, when you can look back at it, you can say, okay, from a team point of view, we didn't get what we fully wanted, but on individual levels, we're we're kind of making a little bit of progress, and it's nice just to be recognised then with the Champion 15 award. To win the final alone was personally brilliant for me, and just to get the award really tops it off. Like. Yes, it was an unbelievably dramatic final and our thanks to Owen and Paddy for recapping it. It would have been a tough job for Owen, so fair play to you. Now, without further ado, we'll announce the Joe McDonough Cup Team of the Year. As usual, start off with a cool borough between the sticks from the Nave Owen Club in Carlow, the great Brian Tracy. A wonderful year for Brian, winning the Joe McDonough Cup and now topped off being recognised as the best goalkeeper in this season's Joe McDonough Cup. The netminder kept four clean sheets over six games in the campaign this year, only conceding two goals in the competition. 
Yeah, and Brian was part of the 2018-18 team that bet Westmead in the final. Well done, Brian. Congratulations. Great goalkeeper. Next, we move to the full back line. Brian is joined there by his county man, Jack McCullough, and also from Offaly, Kieran Burke and Ben Keneally. A powerful full back line who all featured in the Joe McDonough final. Jack McCullough represents his club, Bagnastown Gales, and is joined by Kieran Burke, who was a tower of strength at the edge of the square for Offaly. Unfortunately, Kieran couldn't be with us tonight, but we are joined by his Offaly teammate, Ben Keneally, who completes the line. He has been described as Mr. Dependable in the Offaly team, a rock of their defence for several seasons now, and adds tonight's award to his collection, having won one back in 2021. Yeah, it's great times for Ben with club as well. Since 2016, his club have won four Offaly senior titles. Well done to the lads. Now we move on to the half-back line next. And there, we have Offaly and Carlo representation once again in the form of Jason Sampson and Dermot Byrne. And between them, at centre-back from the Kingdom, is Fiona and Mackesy. Jason Sampson, the Offaly skipper, made the seamless transition from attack to defence this season and hardly put a foot wrong in the polished season. Finan Mackesy's selection of the team of the year this year means he is now featured in the last three McDonough Cup teams of the year. And they are alongside Demert Byrne, whose late point helped snatch victory for Carlo in a truly entertaining Joe McDonough Cup final. Uh, Fionnan's having a great time. He was the first Kerry man to be crowned All Ireland Puck Fodder champion recently in the Cooley Mountains. Uh, so well done, Fionnan. And as regards Dermot Byrne, well, huge development in his career, steady as a rock. Uh, Dermot from the Mount Leinster Rangers Club, captain his side to the Carlo Championship only recently as well. And uh, joint captain of the Carlo team. Three fantastic players there. Well done, lads. So now we move on to the engine room. We're at midfield for the 2023 Joe McDonough Cup Team of the Year. No surprise the winner is here from the St Mullins Club in Carlo, James Doyle, and with him alongside him from Belmont and County Offaly, the attacking midfielder, David Nally. James Doyle had many impressive displays throughout this campaign, including a standout performance in Carlo's comprehensive victory over Kildare. He also scored three points in the final. And for the second year in a row, David Nally is selected at midfield as the Belmont Flyers showed once again that he is one of the most graceful stickmen in the country. Yeah, David certainly is. In last year's off league group championship alone, he got 148, an all action midfielder up and down the field. Well done, lads. Brilliant stuff. So, with just two lines remaining in the Joe McDonough Cup team of the year, we now move to the half forward line. Look at the quality here. This features Stephen Picky Marr from Leash, Chris Nolan from Carlow, and in number 12, Stowns Pierce Old McCrickard. Stephen Picky Marr caps off his inter county season with a place in the Joe McDonough Team of the Year, having impressed for Leash throughout the campaign. He also scored two points for Ireland last weekend in their victory over Scotland in the 2023 Hurling Shinty International. Mount Leinster Rangers' Chris Nolan bagged four points in the Joe McDonough final, helping Carlo to victory. He was previously a winner of awards in 2020 and 2021. And completing the half-forward line is Pierce Old McCrickard, who contributed an impressive 44 points during Down's campaign. So... Yeah. Thanks very much, Larry. Pierce, congratulations. Um, I suppose looking at the Down team, under pressure on a number of occasions, probably against Kildare twice, but really, really came good and continues on the good work that Ronan Sheehan and the guys have been doing up there. Yeah, massively. You know, Ronan's been in with, with the county team now for four or five years and you know, probably didn't look like this year was much progress, but we sat down at the start of the year and we said to ourselves, you know, if we could stay up in Division 2 and, and stay in Division in the, in the Joe McDonough, you know, that, that's a successful year for us because, you know, we were... The majority of the year we had... We were missing the Sands, and we were missing a few key players, and, and we knew that it was all going to probably boil down to the last game, which was, was clear, and thankfully we got the job done. Yeah, you got the job done, and you played a huge part as well. Scored 15 points uh, to save the, the, the league status as well, so well done to Pierce. Um, Chris, uh, for, as regards that final, what was it like to play in? Just to watch it, your head would be all over the place with the nerves and anxiety, but for you as a player in the thick of it? Uh, look, yeah, as I said, 
it was unbelievable. Like, you know, we had to run. It was lost again. And um, to come back and win it, you know, it was an unbelievable game to play. And fair play to Offaly as well. Like, you know, they were a fair team. Like, and um, I suppose when the game was over, just to see, see the sea of red, yellow, and green there in the Hogan stand, it was unbelievable. Like, you know, it's not something you see every day. Like, and, uh, yeah, it was just nice. It was unbelievable. If you could bottle it up like you would, like it was just... Uh, Tom Bellali doing a great job with you? Nah, he's doing a brilliant job, yeah, John. Great manager, fair play to him. Uh, I'll, <laughs> yeah, for Tom would be delighted with that glowing endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push over to you, Picky. Um, as regards, look, you, you, I suppose been hearing about you since you're 16 years of age. Everybody knows your, your hurling ability with your club, with your college, with your county. And I suppose the big thing is to get Leash back up and keep Leash up as much as you possibly can. But where did this year stand in the grand scheme of things? Um, yeah, look, it was probably a disappointing year, I suppose, for us. Um, I suppose we set our stall at the start of the year was to win the John McDonough, and unfortunately we came up short, I suppose. And I suppose in that competition, it's just it's the small margins. Like, I suppose, I was chatting to a few of the Carlow lads at the table, like the, the penalty in the last book of the game probably cost us maybe a uh, final spot, but that's what it comes down to. And, we just weren't good enough this year, but I suppose next year we'll, we'll have another call off it. All right. Thanks very much, Picky. Thanks to Chris and to Pierce as well. Well done, lads. All right, well done. Well done Pierce. It's a, a fairly quality stacked half forward line. We're now on to the final three players of the 2023 Joe McDonough Cup Team of the Year. And our full forward line features Paddy DePaul from Carlo, Paddy Boland. Martin Kavanagh is there as well. And top of the left, it's own Cahill from Offaly. A lethal full forward line. Paddy Boland netted a goal and four points in the final. His St Mullins clubmate Martin Kavanagh is the highest scoring Carlo GA player of all time and wins his second award in as many years. And the Burr sharpshooter Owen Cahill averaged 13 points per game in this season's Joe McDonough Cup. He was also an award winner back in 2021. Yeah, so we'll be calling Paddy the goal soon because he uh, scored a hat-trick in 26 minutes against Kildare. Martin Cavanagh has made history. Um, just the top scorer in the county's hurling history, which is incredible. And Owen Cahill, well, what do you say about Owen? 13 points to put him into the Joe Mack final. Scored 2 11 against Leash. Lads, well done. Unbelievable stuff. Now, that concludes our 2023 Joe McDonough Cup Team of the Year. It contained seven Carlow men, five players from Offaly, and a player each from Kerry, Leash, and Down. A fantastic team. Congratulations to each recipient for their standout performances this season in an unbelievable competition, ladies and gentlemen. Now, our final team to honour this evening is the 2023 Talchin Cup Team of the Year. And once again, we had another terrific season of football in the Talchin Cup, with the Royal County coming out as champions. Let's hear from Conor Gray and Jack Flynn from that Mead side, as they tell us about their Talchin Cup journey now. When you're winning, it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot easier. Whereas we, we come off the league, we lost two or three games in a row, and then we lost the Offaly game. So the mood in the camp was probably a bit in the dumps, like you have to have a few tough conversations, you have to iron out what's going wrong, what's what's working, what's not working. Um, and yeah, then just got back into training. It was my first year out with the senior team, so um, I came in in May, I think, after doing the 20s. A lot of new lads were introduced into the team, so it was good to get exposure for, for us all into senior county football. Tipperary is the first game. It was good to get a win and I think that really set us up for the rest of the competition. It was my first game actually and we knew that we had something there and, and there was a possibility for trophies. The Waterford game was next. Actually quite a difficult game but again we pulled through and, and got the result. There's not many people who had much inter-county experience so when you get a few wins and everyone starts enjoying their training you get a good confidence boost. Going into the down game I knew that it was probably the best two teams in, in the competition. We ended up winning that game by two points, but they had something like 16 or 17 wides, so that was always on our mind when we were playing them again, that we're going to really going to have to up our game if we we're going to beat them again. And it's an effort here, and it's a well-taken score for James McEntee. Then we played Wexford in the quarter-final. It was a sunny day in Avon. Started off slow, they went up by a few points, and then I think once we got, got going, then we really pushed on the second half. We won comfortably in the end then. Next up was Antrim then in the semi-final. It was the first 
day out in Croke Park for a lot of lads. To get that exposure and, and a bit of experience and to prepare for the final was very important. We had built up to that game because obviously Andy McEntee was managing them and he would have, I know he was my first inter-county manager last year and a lot of that, there's some, you've got sons and nephews on, on the meet team so I think that was, that kind of really fed into the atmosphere that day. Half time at the Antrim game everyone was kind of quiet and we knew it was either like kind of do or die here. We kind of clicked then in the second half. Players looking to make their own page of history today in the second ever Charlton Cup. We knew that, that Down would be gunning for us so uh, we were ready for anything that came at us and, and just taking away the points and the goal. It was a great help for us. Comes back as far as Jack Flynn. And Flynn's shot looks uh, hit the post, and it's gone in off the defender, I think. It's a goal. Jack Flynn. Uh, I'd say that was more that was more of a, a, a lob into the box. I didn't really know much about it, so I was kind of laughing after it. So it didn't know how it ended up in the goal. I don't think Ron Jones knew much about it either. Playing football and, and composure kind of brought us to the win. Here they come now. Their tails are up. They're up by two. We played the five. This would give them a golden ticket into next year's Sam Maguire, but they want to win this. And Jack O'Connor can round it off. Stop. Oh, it's in. Jack O'Connor has come on. He's been the hero. It brought the county and, and all the fans, like it brought great joy to the county. And you could see banners going through nearly every town in the county. So it was brilliant. So it now gives me great pleasure to present the Talton Cup to Captain and V Donald Keoghan for Gordagus. There's no silverware in Mead since 2010, so for guys like Donald Keoghan and other the older guys who've put in the last 10 or 11 years without getting much return, for them to get the chance to go up to Hogan Sand and lift some silverware in Crow Park was great. The competition really served its purpose. It gave us a lot of the young lads, it gave us all six championship games together. Um, and hopefully this will be a bit of a launch pad and we can push on next year um, in the National League and run into the championship then. Yes, uh, it was a great, a great ending for the year for Colmer Rooks Meet, winning the Talchin Cup. And that leads us nicely into announcing our final team of the night, the 2023 Talchin Cup Team of the Year. And as always, we'll start with the goalkeeper. And the first name on the team sheet is Meath's Sean Brennan. An impressive campaign for Dunderry Sean Brennan. He made a senior championship debut for Meath in the opening round of the Talchon Cup versus Tipperary back in May. He was a never present from then on, keeping clean sheets in three of the Royal County's five Talchon Cup games. Hey, some man to distribute the ball as well. Well done, Sean. Congratulations. Now to the three men in the full back line of the 2023 Talchon Cup Team of the Year. You can see on your screen another meat man gets the nod at right corner back. That's Adam O'Neill. The full back goes to Downs Pierce Laverty, a class player. And alongside him, equally class from Cavan, it's Pori Faulkner. Adam O'Neill was another new player to the meat senior side this year, making his debut back in January. The Wolf Tone star didn't play minor or under 20 football for Meath, but really showed his qualities this season as part of Colm O'Rourke's outfit. Pierce Laverty captained down this campaign and was one of only three down players to start all seven of their Talchon Cup games. And Patrick Faulkner picks up an award, a never present in Cavan's defence throughout their campaign, consistently tasked with picking up the most dangerous opposition forwards. Yeah, and Corey got two points in the quarter-final against Down, scored a point against Offaly as well. And every single time they went out to play, he was delegated to mark the opposition danger man. Well done, lads. <laughs> now, we move to a, a fairly star-studded half-back line. Jerseys 5, 6 and 7. And our half-back line in the Talchon Cup Team of the Year. Donald Keoghan, Corey Carnan from Meath and Down's Danny McGill. Two more Meath names added to the team so far, as Donald Keoghan from Kenny was the Meath captain this year and regarded as the heartbeat of not just Meath's defence, but the entire team for the last decade. Porrick Harnan hails from the Moyne Alvey Club, a commanding presence at the centre of Meath's defence and in all six of their Talchon Cup outings. And Danny McGill from Burren impressed throughout his debut season for Down, scoring four goals and five points during their run. The 
last man in that line is, is uh, Danny, who's a half back and a half forward. Uh, son of Mion Miguel as well, the legendary down player. Come on, Danny. A tough day in the final, but it was it was quite the run up to that. Yeah, it wasn't easy. Uh, watching that video back, uh, but fair play to the Meath boys. Uh, they had some season. Um, yeah, probably a mixed emotions of season. We're disappointed not to uh, get promoted from Division Three, and then a tough day in Clonus against Armagh. Uh, we had a great group stage in the Tartan Cup, and then a great outing against Leash and a, a Calvin in the quarter final. We just we were pipped by the post at the end against Meath. That experience at Crow Park stand to you in the future? Do you think? Yeah, I hope so, um, and hopefully next season to come and future seasons, you know, maybe that experience of getting beat could be the best thing for us. Thanks, Danny. I'll move over to the two meet lads. Boric, what did it mean to you? You've seen quite a bit in the game, but just to get up those steps um, after Donal and just to lift that cup, what did it mean to the county? Uh, yeah, it was a long time for a lot of lads. Uh, me have been starved of uh, winning anything, so it was great to finally achieve something with the, with the county, so it was a good year. And Donald, just as regards the competition itself, it, it put the county back on a high, really. And would you recognise the merits of what it's done for everybody involved? Yeah, it did, Damien. The, as the lad said in the VT there, the, the county was buzzing after it. So you could see, like, all the young kids in Park Totten there and the homecoming, they were, they were delighted to, to meet us. And hopefully the idea of this would be to ins inspire the next generation. I know I would have grown up looking at me teams winning and your all your aspirations is to, to, to emulate them. So... If we can do that for next generation, that's kind of that's part and parcel of the, the competition as well. And just, you know, you grew up watching Colm and, and what he did for the team this year. Just, like, I suppose, as the year went on, could you foresee maybe the, the boost they would have given the county and given the players? Because you seemed to gel really well. And on final day, there was kind of no stopping you in that second half especially. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to come from momentum, I think. And the, again, the lads mentioned it in the VT that the league was a bit of a mixed league for us. Um, but then the Tolton Cup, we, we kind of started gelling game after game, week after week, and, and as they're winning, the, the bond there between the lads is, is brilliant, and it forms naturally kind of as, as the games progress, and then as the, as the final came, I think it definitely was an element of getting us over the line on that day, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a half-back line to rival anyway. Uh, Danny, Stoll and Porrick hiding well behind so he can't talk. Well done, lads. <laughs> Now, in the middle of the park, the team features representation from both sides in this season's final. At number eight, it's, it's Downs, Odor and Murdoch. Alongside number nine, it's highly impressive, Connor Gray from Meath. Two commanding figures at the centre of the field and thoroughly deserving winners. Ora Murdoch scored four goals and two points during the Talton Cup, hitting the net in each of Downs' three group games. Meanwhile, Connor Gray also flourished in the Talton Cup, starting every one of Meath's games, having made his championship debut in the opening round win over Tipperary. Yeah, two great players. Uh, Connor's had some emergence from under 20 to senior. Uh, it's only 2021 that he played in the Leinster minor final, so the development is unbelievable. So well done to the two lads, our midfielders. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more of them in the years to come. Now to the penultimate line of our Talchon Cup team of 2023. Half forward line from Meath, Jack Flynn. At number 11, Carlos Ross Dunphy. And completing the line is Lean Carr from County Down. Jack gets another piece of silverware for his trophy cabinet, in addition to his Talchon Cup winner's medal and his Man of the Match award from the Talchon Cup final. Ross Dunphy is the first Carlo pair to be include, included on the Talchon Cup team of the year. And Liam Kerr is also honoured. He scored a stunning 3-2 against Leach in the semi-final and added two more points in the final. Yeah, great year all around for the lads. Uh, Jack helped to set up both of Meath's goals in the final. Ross Dunphy uh, scored in four of Carlo's five matches in the Talchon Cup. He got 11 points overall. He's flying it for Aerog and Carlo as well. And then Neem, Neem made a huge impact for Down despite missing their first two games. He made the GEA team of the week for the quarter final, semi final, and final. So well done, Jack, Ross, and Neem. <laughs> now, we're almost there, and thank you so much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. It leads us to the final three players of the 2023 Talchon Cup Team of the Year. It's the full forward line. Huge congratulations to Jordan Morris and Matthew Costello for me, and from Antrim, our left corner forward, Rory McCann. Jordan Morris makes his way to the stage, the highest scorer from play in this year's Talchon Cup with two goals and 15 points. 
Alongside him, county mate Matthew Costello, who scored for me in every game, finishing with a tally of 120. And the place of the team had to be reserved for sharpshooter Rory McCann from Antrim, who netted five goals in Antrim's Talchon Cup campaign. Rory couldn't be with us tonight, but collecting his award on his behalf is his father, Con. Up we go, Con. Don't be shy. Fair play to the full forward line. Well done, Con, and uh, Con's son Rory scored five goals and three points overall. He was such a potent attacking threat. A massive, massive congratulations to all those honoured in our 2023 Talchon Cup Team of the Year. Let's have a quick recap of the full team. It features eight players from the Champions Meath, four players from the Runners Up Down, and a representative from Cavan, Carlo, and Antrim. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And could I also add in, just to say congratulations to the players who featured on each team tonight. You really are a huge credit to your family, to your friends, to your club and to your county. Well done. OK, very important part of the night now, ladies and gentlemen. We move on to announce the recipients of the prestigious Player of the Year awards. And we begin with the Laurie Mara Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your winner from the Laurie Mara. It's Monaghan's Niall Garland. Saying you're not getting away that easily. Um, get rid of the heartbreak. Was it all about that for you? Was it nearly pure relief more so than anything else now? Oh, there was. I'll never, I'll never forget the final whistle. Like, I just dropped and, you know, initially I thought it was just cramp, but no, it was an awful lot of relief uh, come the end of it there. Because, you know, you put in such hard work and, you know, obviously this year, but, you know, this last number of years, like, since any of us joined the county and, you know, to finally get the reward, like I would have said in the VT, like, we'd shocking stats so we had like you know and like you repeat like the near neighbors are my love getting at us and you know so it was great to finally put all that to bed and and come away with glory you got two three in the final and niall ella got 10 points like that really did the job but just to, to play so well on final day what does that mean personally after all the work you put in over the months beforehand Oh yeah, look, look it's, it's, it's every player in this room here today, their, their ambition to play in Crow Park, wearing their county jersey and like, for things to click, you know, on the biggest stage and the biggest day, like it means a lot and it means a lot to our families and our clubs, like, and like as you said, like myself and Neil, thank you have a great relationship on the field, like sometimes you, you turn and like, you just know he's going to be there, like, so it's great when you have a man in there, when you're out midfield half forward and you have a man in there that's just going to be exactly where you want him to be, like it, it makes the job a hell of a lot easier, like. So, last question, you want to drive it on now, I guess? Oh, God, I, yeah, there's no point coming off the road once. You know, like, the Google Maps is parked to one side. Now, we know exactly where we're going, so, you know, <laughs> like, we're, we're mad to get back up. As I said, we get her from there. She kind of came out to the celebrations that night, and she says, will one do you? I was like, I don't know, I wouldn't mind another crack at it now, to be fair. Like, you know, the greediness kind of kicked into me a wee bit. So, uh, <laughs> no, we'll give the Nicky Racker now. Like, this, it's a journey we've been on. And it's exciting times in Mon and Hurling, and you know, we firmly believe it's only the start, so we'll give it a good rattle next year. See you next year, same time, same place. Oh, I'll be it's in the diary already, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> now, Garland, Laurie Marty. <laughs> Jesus, now, if they're all like you, my job would be an awful lot easier. Now, next up, we move to the Nicky Racker Cup, and the 2023 Player of the Year goes to. An absolute stalwart, Wicklow's Andy O'Brien.
getting away with that. I, I hope you're quicker on the field in Crow Park than you are here anyway. I know I've heard of people avoiding media interviews, but by God, that's, that's something else. Yeah. Look, you're back, you're player of the year. Yeah. You give your whole life to it. You give so many years. What kept you going through really dark days just to go back and wear that jersey again? <laughs> just like hurling, really. <laughs> um, no, look, I'm a hurling man since I was 10. And then in Wicklow, you have football, which is first sport, but I was never any good at it. <laughs> so I uh, always played hurling. And look, this is the icing on the cake, really. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, know. you need to get a bit fitter. You're out of breath from the title run. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he gave up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fairness, ladies and gentlemen, before he did give up, he scored 92 goals and 517 points for his county. What did it hit? <clears throat> Just a, a final thing, like, a lot of that was just off-Broadway, and people wouldn't have been roaring and shouting about it. I'd say the type of fella you are had probably suited you, but did you ever kind of say, we deserve a bit more promotion, we deserve a bit more scrutiny here, we're doing good work. Yeah, well look, everyone I think in the weaker counties define ourselves the football or this or that, but real hurling men just gets on with us, like, I mean, just take it as you get it. So that's what we did down our way anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Worked away with Andy O'Brien, <laughs> our you. player of the year. Well done. Uh, now we move on to the 2023 Christy Ring Player of the Year. It goes to a man who will need to make serious room on his mantelpiece because he won a Player of the Year award in 2019. Meets Jack Regan. <clears throat> Jack, just, I was going to ask you earlier, when you were probably injured at the start of a season and maybe you're not quite at the pitch of it in the early games, is that mentally kind of frustrating? Do you have to work through that and just keep your patience? Uh, yeah, look, um, I suppose kind of working with the, like the physios and, and the s coach kind of away from the group at the start of the year probably was frustrating and stuff like that. And even kind of when Sarah and were trying to integrate me back into the team, I was probably only getting 10 and 15 minutes at the end of the game. I was getting frustrated. I was ringing them after the game the next week saying, like, I need to be playing more, blah, blah, blah. He's like, will you relax? Like, just bring it back in gently. So look, in fairness to them, they got me right. And uh, I'm just delighted to be here now tonight. What did Sarah and the lads bring to, to me hurling? Because, you know, he's got lots of experience, obviously. Yeah, look, he, 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 he definitely brought, a, I suppose, a huge, huge professionalism to the whole thing, like, you know, um, like arriving to training probably an hour and 20, an hour and 30 before training, kind of everyone being in the dressing room together, all that sort of thing. I suppose even the commitment that he puts in, you see him down there as wife Sharon, yeah. like yeah. He, he's traveling maybe two and a half hours up the road, two and a half hours back down the road. So if he's doing that, do you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be given 110 percent. Final it. question for you, Jack. Just it's a, a boom time for meat football, both ladies and men's. But just meat hurling, the work that's going on at underage. Would you be optimistic that that'll come through the production lines and keep you guys at a, a standard where you deserve to be? Ah, uh, yeah. Look, I, I think so. There's, there's obviously been great work been done with the underage and stuff like that, and there probably was a bit of a persona there for years that, you know, the footballers are treated better than the hurlers and all this kind of thing. But like, there's there's representatives here from the county board tonight, like on we want for nothing. Um, like, mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing at all. Whatever we want, we get. You know, uh, we train just as much as the footballers do. We put just as much into it as the footballers do, and stuff like that. So, like, the perception's probably gone now. So, look, hopefully, me will just keep keep going the way it's going. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our Christy Ring Player of the Year, Jack Regan. <laughs> now it's time to reveal the Joe McDonough Player of the Year for 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a class act. Carlos Martin Cavanagh. Good to see you, Martin. I'm good, I'm good. Congratulations. Um, Look, we just get the, the elephant out of the room, first of all, with the, the top scorer award. And I, you're a man just as shy away from that. But I, just looking at your stats again, I mean, 
the, the record was held by Pat Cody for a long, long time. He was on 676 points. You're 687. It includes 29 goals and 600 points, ladies and gentlemen. And I know, you're, I know you run a mile from that sort of stuff, Martin, but like deep down at home in the family, it has to mean an awful lot. Obviously, look, it's, it's nice to have it, like, you know. Um, look, I grew up, obviously, wanting to play for Carlo and um, look to, to, to obviously break Pat's record. You know, a club man, like, it's yeah. obviously it's lovely to, to have it, like, but... Did Pat go mad? <laughs> he texts me already, already, a little bit, uh, a little bit mad, but... <laughs> look, the main thing is that, look, we're, we're, we're winning Joe McDonald's and... Yeah. Christian Rings in the last probably eight or nine years, and you know we're competing against top teams. So as long as that's happening, I'll be happy. So that's yeah. the main thing going forward. Serious bunch of players, serious manager, serious coach. What was the difference this year in terms of tempo? Because it took you a while to get going, really, to get the, the top gears. <clears throat> yeah, I suppose in the last two or three years, I suppose we, we lost out to the Joe Mac narrowly enough, like to, to to get the finals. And this year, I suppose we kind of we we played the league to mix the young lads in. Yeah, and then we really took off in the Joe Mac. So. We were off at the start of Joe McDonough, which, which we fed off big time, but uh, look, Joe Mack is a brilliant competition. Like, yeah. Anyone could win it on any day, so to come on top of that, we're delighted. Obviously, on, on the day, Offaly could have won as handy as we could have won, and as Stephen Maher was saying there, they could be in the final as handy as yeah. it was. Like, so <clears throat> that's what it comes down to. We got, the, we got a bit of luck, got rubbed the green, so we're delighted to be here and delighted to win it. So. And so many subplots. A final one for you, Martin. Every player here has put in so much effort over the years. How important is it to stay fresh? Like, you had a few injuries there and maybe a bit of travel last year, took a bit of time off. And did that do wonders for you? Uh, I don't know about that now. You only come, you only come back worse than okay. travelling. So, socially, to do wonders for you. Yeah, I know. Look, it's great to get away and have a break from that yeah. kind of mindset. Like, you know, you play a bit of hurling out there, but obviously it's not a series. And, you travel and have a bit of crack, but <clears throat> that's part and parcel of it. And look, that was a great time, and it's great to come home. And again, look, just delighted with the year we had. So, okay, our Joe McDonough, Hurler of the Year, that's Martin Kavanagh. Thanks, Martin. Now to our final award of the evening, we're almost there, the Tolchin Cup Player of the Year and no different to any of the other competitions. This was a hotly contested category. Aguina Uchle, the 2023 Tolchin Cup Player of the Year is Matthew Costello. Just for yourself, um, after maybe the league and the early round of the championship, a lot of people could have said, right, this isn't happening at the moment, and you could have lost heart. You guys didn't. What happened in the, the I suppose, the interim? Yeah, it was definitely a, a tough time of the year. Um, we were probably our backs against the wall, and a lot of lads could have given up and, and gone away, maybe gone travelling for the summer or whatever, but you know, we felt like we'd, uh, we'd something bigger to, to play for, and thankfully we did, and ended up being a nice positive end of the year. Yeah, um, Carlo Bricks minor side a couple of years ago, you know, did really, really well. There's so many good players coming through the, the youthful setup, and it's not so long ago you, you were there yourself, I mean, playing in a, an all our minor semi final. The status of playing for your county, what does it mean to you personally? Oh, it means everything. Um, you know, growing up, watching me in football and everything, just knowing the, the players that come before you, um, you know, it means a lot to to represent my, firstly my club in the chocolate and then but to go on and play with me and, and, and wear the green jersey, it's just, it's, it's massive, it's, it's what you want and getting to play here in Crow Park in, in big final days, it's, it's, yeah, it's a pleasure. And is that, last question for you, is that the glory of this competition then that you can get to, to get used to the confines of Crow Park, get used to the dimensions of the pitch, try and win something for your county that's a tangible achievement for you as well? Yeah, absolutely and, and it also just meant that we, we got six, seven more championship games together. We got to play big, big matches like sit down in, in um, Parnell Park there and then again in Crow Park twice this year. It was, just gives great experience, gives good exposure for lads that mightn't get it and obviously it bonds the team together. Well done, Matthew. Our Talgian Cup Player of the Year, Matthew Costello. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our ceremony for this evening from wherever around the world you've been watching. My thanks to the family and friends Everybody in this room, the viewers watching live on the GEA social media channels, the staff here at Crow Park for hosting a brilliant event. But the biggest thank you of all is to the players of all the competitions featured tonight. Congratulations once again to you. We'll talk to you next year. 
Slán agus bánáxi bún